all. Y'all get up on your feet. Y'all help me sing that. Come on, we ushering the presence of the Lord in this place. Just sing it like this right here. Choir! We just worship him. Oh, the same. great is our God. You know how great he is, don't you? He is great enough to keep us and everybody else that's still above ground. And he's got those who are underground. It's a great day to be alive. And I can say that from the bottom of my heart because I know. See, I was, I was in another place almost four years ago. Dragging two axes in tanks. Any kind of incline was trouble. But see how great God is? You see where he put me? In a large place. I'm just glad to be here. And I'm glad to see everyone here. So, if hallelujah is the highest praise, then the Psalms number 47 says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. It ain't nothing hard about clapping for the Lord. I ain't going to preach now. Let us pray. Every heart and every mind stayed on Jesus. Eternal God and our Father, we come before thy presence this morning as humble as we know how we first want to thank you for this day and we thank you for this worship service. Thank you for those who are here and we certainly thank you for those who are still on their way. Now, Lord, we thank you that you didn't let our faults overtake us, but you gave us another opportunity to call upon your holy name. We thank you, O Master, that you woke us up this morning and chose in our right mind with a reasonable portion of help and strength. You woke us up with the activity of our limbs. You gave us ears to hear, eyes to see, and a mouth to praise you with, Lord. We call upon you this morning, Lord, to just bless this service. Lord, we just ask that you would touch every heart and every mind that we may be fully devoted to lifting you up in praise this morning and worshiping you in spirit and in truth. For we know that you seek such to worship you. We ask, O Master, that you would anoint Pastor Miller with a fresh anointing this morning that he may preach your gospel and let 
open our ears, Lord, that we may hear your word and take it out into a dying world. We ask, oh, now so that you would bless the sick and the afflicted among us because we know that you are the great physician. Bless the bereaved families this morning. Comfort them at this time as only you can. We ask, oh, now so that you would continue to shed your grace and mercy down upon us. Thank you for being faithful to us. Dear Lord, we just ask that you would touch our hearts this morning that we may love one another as you have already loved us. That we may forgive one another as you have already forgiven us. And we will be ever mindful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory that you so rightfully deserve. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray and ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Anybody feel like worship in this place? Come on, come on. You can do better than that. Anybody feel like worship in this place? 
God has continued to support us. He woke us up. Mothers, it's so good to see you. Mothers, it's good to see you. Deacons, you're on your charge. I thank God for you. Trustees are here. I thank God for you. You're here. The choir is here. Listen, God is good, isn't he? Listen, this song is hallelujah. I just listen. Have you ever just went through some things and all you can do is after you come out and just say, Lord, hallelujah. No, no other words, just hallelujah. Because this is the God that we serve. And I'm telling you right now, I want you to join in in worship. Choir, I, I really need you. I, I need to get in the presence. Can, can we get in the presence of God? salvation and glory glory to God 
We bless you, choir. We honor you. Listen, it's time. It's time for us to read together the church covenant. Have it. You stand with me. I'll read. I'll read the first. You the second. We will do that until we get to the last that we will read in unison. If you don't have one, please stand with someone. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Congregation. We do now, in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. To promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, disciplines, and doctrine. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger. further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love. To be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. All we moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will, as soon as possible, unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. The man of God, it appeared to the media ministry, it appears that we can't hear too well online. I'm receiving text. Bless you, man of God. Amen. This song simply says God is awesome. Can anybody testify and say that the Lord is awesome? Amen. Didn't he wake you up this morning? Amen. Didn't he start you on your way? Amen. Activity of your limbs? Oh, he's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. Come on. Let's give God a hand of praise in this place.
listen. It's all to prayer time. Could you come on around? You know what? Before altar prayer, while they're singing that, it's a good song that we can get prepared to give the Lord tithe and offerings. He's awesome like that. I was telling the church last Sunday that Jesus spoke about money 20 times more than he spoke about salvation. 20 times more than he spoke about anything else. The reason being because he understands where your heart is. He says your treasure will be there also. Listen, this is what I want you to do. And we thank God for you online. You online and you're listening. I'm going to need the... I need the help of everyone this morning. I want everyone to sow $20 more today. I need everyone to do that. When God spoke to me about, about getting up for offering, he told me that, remember, son, that we have to sow to the place that we're looking to go. Does that make sense? Your harvest is dependent upon what you sow. Now, remember what the scripture says. That that a man sows, he reaps. It's not only talking about his behavior. Amen, somebody. But it's talking about in our finances. Uh, listen, this is what I believe. I believe that the cattle on a thousand hills belong to the Lord. I believe that. The scripture also declares that if he was hungry that he wouldn't tell a soul because the world is his. That's the God that we serve. That he has total control, he's, he's sovereign enough that he don't have to make mention when he's hungry. Because creation is his. And Paul said that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. I need everyone, I know you've probably written out your tithe, your offerings, I need you to sow with me an extra $20. You online, I need you. I need about 40 of you to sow an additional $20. For what the Lord is, is taking this ministry, I want you to sow into the anointing of this ministry of Mount Olive. And we can do this together. This is a show of solidarity, solidarity, it's also a show of you're, you're trusting God and you're putting God to the test. He said, prove me. Anybody ready to prove the Lord? He said, prove me. It's a season to prove. So would everyone stand as we prepare? Some of you are saying, well, I don't have any cash. Well, we can give by Givelify. Look up Mount Olive. Missionary Baptist Church of Albuquerque. You look that up. Um, we also give um, by Zell, M O M B C at finance at gmail.com, M O M B C dot finance, I'm sorry, at gmail.com. I want you, I want you to, to trust God with us. Trust the vision that we're going to love. We're going to lead, and we're going to live like Christ. And to do these things, we want to make a statement in this community. We want to make a statement in the community and let them know that we are a place of shelter, a place of help. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for everyone that's abiding by what you have released. We thank you for tithe and offering. Lord, there are some here that may not have, but we know that you can change situations overnight. Lord, give them an overnight experience in the mighty name of Jesus. You do it for your glory. That they would remember this prayer and they will worship you and you alone. Father, do it for your glory. Give testimony today. Father, not tomorrow, but right now, because you are right now God. 
Move by your power and then by your might in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, let every heart say amen. If the ushers will come forth and they will lead you while you're still standing, you start from the back after they're positioned and you come on around. We are tithing to our right, to my right, your, your left. And then we have benevolence to my left and to your right. Please be led by God. Thank you. just that easy. If Jesus is in you, you can't help but love. I'm going to leave that alone. It's time to pray for the all. Our God in heaven, we come at this hour thanking you first for this day and we thank you for this offering. We ask that you would bless it, let it be used for the edification of thy kingdom here on earth. We ask that you bless the benevolence fund that it may be used to help someone in need. Then, Lord, we just ask that you would continue to bless the Mount Olive Baptist Church family. Keep us all in your care. And we'll be ever mindful to give you all praise, honor, and glory that you so rightfully deserve. To the mighty name of Jesus that we pray and ask it all. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Amen. We thank you for your obedience. At this time, you all will let us come together for altar prayer. If there's a problem that you're dealing with now, this is the place. The altar is the place of sacrifice. In the Hebrew, altar is bayak. It means a place of slaughter. If you're looking for deliverance from a bondage, from anything, if you're seeking God for something, now is the time to come forth. God is able, and he has done. Let me say that. Not only is God able, but he's already done it. Peter, Peter says that by his divine power, he's given all things that pertains to life and godliness. And what we have to do is that we must learn. It's important 
for us to learn how to declare and then decree. It's important. It was there in John 16 and 23. He says, and in that day you ask for nothing. Now it's important. He says, in that day you ask for nothing. He said, and then he says, whatever you ask, my Father, in my name, name meaning nature, character, and authority, it will be given you. It will be given you. I'm going to say that again. What you're looking for has to be given you. I'm going to say that again because you probably didn't get it. What you're looking for will be given you. That's what the scripture says there in 16 and 23. And the reason being is, is because you walk in the nature, the character, and the authority of the Lord. He says, whatever you ask in my name, the Greek word for name is onomo. And it means nature, character, and authority. So whatever you ask in my nature, in my character, and my authority, he says, I will give it you. Let us pray. Father, we come to you right now. Father, we're seeking you on every hand, trusting and believing you in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we, we come for different reasons. Father, we bind every attack of the enemy off of our lives. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, where he come to wreak havoc. But I'm glad, God, that your blood have lifted up a standard. Father, I'm happy that we can call on you. I'm happy, God, that we're able to declare and to decree. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you would do what you said that you would do. And Father, your word is that you will answer all prayers. And so, God, we thank you right now. Father, there's some around the altar with heavy burdens. Father, we know that you are a heavy load. Sarah, God, you're a burden bearer. We, we know your capabilities. And God, we're calling on you right now because we're in need of some help. There's some things that's going on in our lives. Some folk are dealing with issues. But God, I know that you're a hot fixer, mind regulator. And we need you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. That you would do it for your glory. Do it right now. Father, we thank you. We thank you for everything that you're bringing forth, God. We cast we cast out everything that's not like you. We bind it in the mighty name of Jesus that you will open our minds and our eyes that we're able to hear and see what you're releasing. Father, create in us the clean heart that you need. We need a renewing. God, renew us. Father, do it for your glory. Father, I thank you right now. Father, we know what the Supreme Court ruling has been about affirmative action, God. But I know that you are God of all actions. Father, meet needs right now. Father, we bind the attacks of the enemy. And we will not live in the past, God. But we're going to stand today on your word. Do it for your glory. That boy, that girl that, that seemingly will have trouble, make a way in the mighty name of Jesus. Make a way for families in the mighty name of Jesus. Make a way, God. Put worship on our hearts. Put praise upon our tongues. And remind us that you are God. And beside you, there's no one else. Father, I send the word to Sister Brown, Brother Brown, God. She's sick. I send the word to her that you would touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. I send the word to Jody, God. Move by your power, God. Do it for your glory. Whatever that is in opposition to your word, we hold it into captivity right now. And we declare and decree the power of the blood in Jesus' mighty name. Those under the sound of my voice, God, do it for them. You do what they're in seek of of you. Do it for your glory. We thank you in advance. 
Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hug somebody, tell them that you love them. you stand up on your feet. We give honor to God who's the head of our lives. We give honor to the Son of God who's given us the right to the tree of life. We give honor to the Holy Spirit that is in, has filled us with all fullness that we can know who Jesus is and we can live out this gospel. I haven't been perfect all my life yet. And I thank God that we're all of a single healer because all of us, at some level, have wronged God. Some level have wronged somebody. And I want to say, if I've wronged anyone here, if you can find it in your heart, if you can find enough grace to forgive me, that you can charge those things to my head and definitely not to my heart. I recognize that that no one is perfect. Nobody. And we all are trying to get to the same place. And so I encourage each and every one of you. Sometimes you may go to have to go to that person that you know that you haven't done anything wrong, but they have an art against you and still say could you forgive me see that's the love that that Christ is looking for us to exhibit he said it on the cross he said Lord forgive them for they know not what they do and if we can mimic that the world would be greater it would be greater because we're showing them how we're to operate the past is the past we can't do anything about it, but oftentimes we carry things as if it's here in the present. I'm going to sing a bit of this song as we get ready to get into the Word. And while I'm singing, you can find there in Revelation 12, Revelation 12 and 11. Some good days. Have anybody been there? And I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some long Have anybody been there? How do I my bad days? I won't complain. Sometimes my clouds hang low. So low 
but I can hardly see the road. I ask a question, Lord. Why so much pain? Just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why I won't complain. He dries all of my tears away. in two days have anybody been down but I'll just say thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord I I won't complain see God has been good to me anybody. He's been so good to me. As far as we alive could ever see. He's been so good. He's been so good. to me, he's been so good, sister, when she's gone, he's been so good, he's been a father to me, he's been so good, when I've been stabbed in my back, he's been so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege of preaching the gospel. We don't take it lightly. But Father, we recognize that it's definitely instruction. It is the very same power that rebukes and reproves. And we want to say thank you. I am an empty pitcher before a full fountain. Father, I'm in need of you. Arrest me and set me into the sea of humility that I know nothing of men. Father, I don't want them to see me. I desire for them to see you. Lord, you do this for your glory. And Father, allow something to be released that bring deliverance, that will bring breakthroughs, that will release revelation in life. Father, you do this for your glory. And we will be careful. Father, I need your anointing. Anoint me right now. In Jesus' mighty name, let every heart say amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. If you have your Bibles there, Revelation 12 and 11 is just one verse. You know, though we're still in the series of Grace Unleashed, this is part seven.
as you get that in the, and rise to your feet, you get ready to look into this, what God is saying. If you have that, say, Amen. You'll find there in Revelation 12 and 11, the King James Version. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. We want to deal with this morning an indestructible testimony. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the pastor is going to deal with an indestructible testimony. You may be seated. Oftentimes, Revelation is one of those books that we have come to fear. The truth is, Revelation, it gives testimony of who Jesus is. So it, instead of it being a book of fear, in actuality, it's a book of praise. Because it's revealing unto us who Jesus is. You would find in Revelation 1, where you would see a repeated phrase, he who was, he who is and is to come. It's talking about Jesus. Now, John the Revelator, him being taken uh, out of his spirit, and he was there on the Isle of Patmos, John had a distinct view of who Jesus is. He had a distinct view. God gave revelation. He revealed unto him not only the past. He, he, he revealed to John the past. He dealt with John with the present. And then he dealt with John the future. So you have to be careful as you peruse through revelation because it could be dealing with Jesus as when he was. Uh, uh, it could be dealing with him now and then who we will see in the future. It's important. And he had a distinct view of how he released this. Him being in Greece around that era, area, that they were Greek-speaking Jews. Just like Paul, he knew what was in the minds of the unbeliever. Let's consider, let, let's consider because there were ancient, there were many ancient mythologies during that time. And it contained stories, stories of an evil usurper uh, who, who was doomed once the Savior would come. And so this usurper tries to escape his destiny by killing the prince. See, this was the mind back then, by killing the prince when he was born. But the prince is unexpectedly snatched away from danger until he get of age. And he claims his rightful inheritance. The version of this story is known in Asia Minor, and it was the goddess of Leto who was pregnant with Apollo, the son of Zeus. She was attacked by the dragon Python because he knew that her offspring had been appointed to kill him. But she was carried to a safe place by the winds of Zeus. The God of Poseidon shielded, hid this particular stretch of land where the woman could not be found. Four days after Apollo was born, 
he fought the dragon and slew him. When we read chapter 12, we see this direct connotation of how John had to strategically put his words together in order to reach the audience. Um, I had the privilege of going to Greece and uh, I, I went to the Acropolis there and looked at temples, statues of gods. So we understand what Paul meant when he prayed to the unknown God. He was looking at temples where they were worshiping idol gods. John has the same revelation of his audience. And so he, as God is showing him heaven, showing him the things that went on, because Chapter 12, and this is often debated, but chapter 12 is actually what happened between Genesis 1, verse 1, and verse number 2. It gives us a picture that something happened, gives us an idea of what Lucifer did against God. But thank God, look at your name and say, thank God for, for a fighter. Michael, the archangel, went down and, and dealt, dealt with that. He, he, he did the business that he needed to deal with. And so as we look here, John 16 says, in 33, these things have I spoken unto you that ye might have peace in a world that you shall have tribulation. But he says, be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. Constantly in the scripture, we're reminded of the strength of God. Our problem is tiny compared to a creator. And, and I want to help somebody today because any problem that you're going through, Remember that Satan had to come and get permission from God to inflict it upon you. So, so if you're going through something, know that God has already given you what you need in order to make it on the other side. See, oftentimes we want to praise after we go through. I submit unto you, you need to start praising him now. Praise him before the battle is over. You need to shout because Lucifer is the employee. God is the employer. And he's got to come and get permission. And sometimes you got to remind the enemy, listen, you, you, what you're trying to do to me is illegally. It's illegal. You can't charge me double for what my God has already paid for. You can't do it to me. The finished work of the cross have declared me not only innocent, but I'm just before God. I'm unblameable before God. Romans 16 and 20 says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan. And he's going to put him under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And then he signs off and says, Amen. See, we got to know the power of God and the power that is within you. Jesus says, The kingdom is within you. See, if you don't mind me, can I get a little personal? See, we got to stop praying. Watch this. We got to stop praying and looking up in heaven as if God. It's far away. Jesus said the kingdom is within you. Christ within you, the hope of glory. 
and we're praying as if he's somewhere else. And God is saying, I need you to be in communion with me. This is why I release the Holy Spirit. So you will know me. I'm not far away. I'm nigh unto thee. Stop saying that I'm over there. Stop waiting for the kingdom for you to get to the kingdom. He says, Jesus says, thy kingdom come, let thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I want you to, if you don't mind me, come close a little bit. That's good. Park right there. The kingdom is trying to advance you on a daily basis. But only if the enemy can keep you. We dealt with a couple Sundays ago. We dealt with the ego. We dealt with that. But Revelation is revealing that the devil is your nemesis. Lucifer is your nemesis. Yeah. Satan is your nemesis. Contrary to popular belief, he's not mad at Jehovah God. He had his shot. He tried to overthrow him. He's a good sport because he has to come and get permission. Y'all missed it. He's not mad at him. They got an agreement. It's a covenant now. I wish I, wish I had some praying folk in here. He's not upset at God. But you, on the other hand, is another problem. He's coming after you. 12, 12 of, of, of Revelation said, listen, he's coming down. He know he have but a short length of time. He said, listen, you best to beware because he's coming for you. And no matter their situations and their circumstances that we go through, and uh, I want you to understand that the enemy is trying to do all and everything that he can to derail you. There are three things that I want to deal with. My testimony made me indestructible. My testimony, my testimony gave me immunity from humiliation. And my testimony has given me invincibility. My testimony has made me indestructible. Jewish exegetes, as they look at the scripture, they look at the sons of, of Jacob. And he says there in, 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 in Genesis 37 uh, that they perceive us as stars of God. Because stars are indestructible in nature. And they said this because if we're indestructible, if they look at us as stars and we're indestructible, then we're immune to what the enemy tried to throw at us. Now, they're right on course because... John, 1 John 3 and 2 says, Beloved, now that we are sons of God, God has made us indestructible because we're sons of God. See, I just don't want to be a Christian. I want to be the son that I've been made to be because a son has rights. Y'all walk with me. Christians can get caught up into religion, but a son has relationship. And we got to see where that when the enemy comes to us, because he's coming, God has the proclivity to change what he has for bad for your good. That's what he said told to Joseph. He said, listen, what? What the enemy, what Satan meant for that, I turned it 
from a good. And we have to see how God is operating in our lives. And so we can't, we can't fear when God has taken the time to give us power. You can search all over the world. You can go to the highest mountains and you can look for peace. You can't find it. You can go into the deepest valley the, underneath the seas and you can search for it and it's not there. You can go to the uttermost depth of the earth and it not be there. Because Satan will not allow you to see what God has placed in the inside. And oftentimes we look at others. Oftentimes we look at situations. But we fail to look at ourselves in the mirror. The reason that David was a man after God's own heart was because he was quick to ask God for forgiveness. He was quick to tell the Lord, listen, search me all over. I'm not perfect, Lord. I, I've done some things wrong. I need you to search me. Is there anybody in here that ever says, search me, Lord? God wants us to get to a place well, we're humble enough to be honest with him. See, even now when we pray, we still don't tell God how we really feel. As if he don't know. But what he placed in the inside of you, and, and, and the enemy have to have permission to get to you, he has made you indestructible. And so the things that you've overcome, you can look behind you and say, it was him. It was him that brought me over. It was him that put a tongue, a song on my tongue. It was him that didn't allow me to look like what I've been through. It was him that when folk talked about me, he still approved of me. It was him that took the guilt and the shame away from me. It was him. That said, no matter what you do, son, I am I'm in love with you. It was him. And it's because he looked over my folks and he saw my knees. He gave me an indestructible testimony. Not only did he give me an indestructible testimony, but he he gave me immunity from humiliation. There is a word that the power that the that the scripture often declares that we have, and it's called power. Power in the Greek is jurisdiction, juris law, meaning that he's given us diction and word. Power. He's given us jurisdiction. The word that you have, it gives you property. You have the authority. Now watch this. He gives you the authority to lay down the law and give you authority to finish it. Let, let me go another way. Because you have the keys to the kingdom. The Bible says, I, I feel this, I feel this. I feel God in this place. The Bible says it like this. He said, Jesus said, listen, Peter, because you have spoken a word of power, I'm about to give you jurisdiction. He says, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. 
I'm going to give you access. I know you're in the physical, but I'm going to give you access to the spiritual. I'm going to allow you to be seated in heavenly places. I, I, I'm going to put you above. I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. And whatever you bind on earth, I got angels surrounding you. It's angels in front of me daily, constantly. The Bible says that they behold the face of God continuously. So whatever you bind, the angels that's in front of me are going to make sure that it happened. Whatever you loose on earth, he says, I'm going to loose. I'm going to loose in heaven because I've given you jurisdiction. I've given you power. And so I got angels because when you believe in the finished work of the cross, you're already on Mount Zion. Hebrews 12 and 22 says you've already come to Mount Zion. And he says that I've given you an innumerable company of angels. So you got angels around you right now waiting on you to give God praise for what he's already done. And it's the angel's job to get you what you're praising God for. Because he's giving you jurisdiction. And see, in many cases, humiliation comes because of the way a person view you. See, God has a way. He has a way because people can guilt you into shame. Unfortunately, it's in the church, just like it is on the outside. Um, but if anybody should be more understanding, it should be the church. Because we've all come from somewhere. Now, 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 I know that you might be holy now. But there were some days that you weren't holy. I know you may love him now. But there were some things that you used to do that you felt that you didn't deserve his love. And I'm here to tell you that guilt can come by the words of your mouth because, watch this, because he's giving you jurisdiction. So somebody can actually speak over you and give guilt to you. But the same word that spoke over you that will guilt you is the same word of God that will pick you up out of the Maori clay. I wish I had help in here. The same mouth that cusses you and make you feel like you're nothing is the same mouth that God will speak through to allow you to feel the invincibleness that he made you. Man has ultimate authority. He has, he has the final word because he's given you dominion here. Deacon Beecham, he's given you dominion. And he did that when he decided to make man. The specifics is what counts. We have to look at what God said in order to walk in where he has placed us. See, God has elevated us and I don't know why we like to live in valley situation. He's elevated us, and somehow we find how to crawl through sewers. When he's created us to tread over serpents and scorpions. But for some odd reason, we don't see ourselves the way God sees us. I feel good in this place. Listen to me. When God simply said, he said, let us make man in our image. Oh, my God, y'all missed it. See, he was specific. It's the specificity that changes your whole life. 
because nothing that anybody can say about you should be able to guilt you because God has already elevated you. You've been protected. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the Lord has protected me from humiliation. He says, he says, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. I want you, when you walk, you don't hold your head down. I feel like I'm back in the 30s. I feel like I'm back in the 40s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel, even though I've never been in slavery, but somehow our, our forefathers used to bow down. But every time I read this word right here, the Lord tell me to straighten your back up. Look forward. It's from the hills that come with your help. You don't need to look down any further because I'm the God. Forget from affirmative action. They can rule all they want to. I got a God that changes everything. He's given me testimony. He's gave me he, immunity from humiliation. And he does this, or he did this, because he's given us his name. Told you earlier, the name is not just anything. I don't want you to just pray and say, in the name of Jesus. Because if you just say the name, you just think about the Lord Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. But if you transpose what name means in the Greek, nature, character, and authority, it changes everything. In the nature, the character, and the authority of Jesus. You see the difference? Because he's given you his name. The moment that he created us in his image, he gave us his nature. He gave us his character. And then he gave us his authority. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Watch this. Just mean that you've been declared innocent. You are innocent before God. It is the devil that's a, the accuser of the brethren. He's the only one that's accusing you. But the God that we serve, the God that created us, he made us free from humiliation. And whatever the devil is accusing us of, I thank God for the blood because it's the blood that paid the price. Last thing I want to deal with that my testimony has given me invincibility. My testimony has made me indestructible. It is the same testimony that have given me immunity from humiliation. And then my testimony has given me invincibility. Invincibility declares that nothing can stop you. Invincibility says that there's not a nemesis around that can conquer you. And I'm happy because before we all got here, Jeremiah said that the Lord knew us before we got here. He never gave credit to our mothers. He says, before you was in your mother's womb. So he didn't give credit to the mother. But God took the full credit for you being here. 
and it's there in Psalms 91. <clears throat> well, the Bible says it like this. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, yeah, shall, look at that shall station, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Out of all the scriptures in the Bible, this is the only scripture that declares to name of God in it. And that says something. Because we see El Shaddai at the end. And then we see El Elyon in the beginning. He says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, El Elyon. He's the self-existent one. Watch this. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's El Shaddai. Y'all missed it. Because the Lord that we serve. It's the God that we serve. What he allowed us, when he made us in his image, what he had in mind was Jesus going to the cross. He had in mind the finished work and what it would do. And I'm so glad that, yes, that the Lord loved me enough that he made me in his image. I'm so glad this morning that the Lord loved me enough uh, that he put me into two places. The moment that I accepted his word, the moment that I accepted his name, and I believed in everything that he did. He says, I'm going to make you invincible. Because while you're in the secret place, I'm going to have you under the, the, the El Elyon, the Most High. Not only that, I'm going to allow you to be under the shadow of El Shaddai. And I'm so glad that it will all shut down yet that Moses fell in love with. It was all shut down that he learned what God was capable of. And yes, it was all shut down yet that empowered Jesus to get there on the cross so we can all have a perfect testimony that we become overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. Has anybody ever been overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony? See, there's something that you got to go through in order to walk on your testimony. I'm so glad that the blood of Jesus has given me all I need. I got testimony. I just don't have anything. But I've been tested. I've been tried. And now I receive what God has for me. I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. Grab your neighbor by the hand. It's a neighbor. A testimony. I got. I got a reason to pray. I got. I got a reason to call his name. Because he gave me a testimony. Do you hear me? I'm so glad. The Bible says. He said. Thousands will fall in my left. Ten thousand will fall in my right. Because I got a testimony. Is there anybody here? Can you tell the world? 
something. He said, look to the hills. Has anybody looked there to heal? Which come at my help? My help come from the Lord. And I'm so glad that he loved me so that he gave me a testimony that he defeated the enemy. He defeated the enemy. When the enemy tries, he's given me victory. And I tell each and every one of you, use your authority. Use your jurisdiction. Because God has already supplied your needs according to your riches and glory. And I glad, and I'm glad that his love has covered me, and I'm so glad that he put himself inside of me, I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost, I got Holy Ghost power, that when the enemy comes to me, I can stand on my swear, and I can tell the enemy that the Lord loves me. There's no humiliation here, but I got invincibility. I got an indestructible testimony. No matter what the enemy said about me, I got an indestructible testimony. No matter what you said about me, I got an indestructible testimony. And I'm glad that God has Shined on me, and I'm so glad he picked me up. He loved me so, and he always see the best in me. Do anybody here, have you ever wanted to see the best in you? I tell you, take your time, talk to God, and he will. He will and say, tell you, my grace, it is sufficient because I'm in love with you. So thank you, sir, for going to the cross. Thank you, sir, for going to a bottle of two. Thank you, sir, for defeating hell for me. Thank you, sir. For rising up on the third day, thank you, sir, for giving me the keys to the kingdom that I'm able to speak a word and the enemy has to flee. I'm able to speak a word over my life and it changed situations. and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever 
God has been too good to us. He's been too good to us. He's been so good to us that he provided the testimony. All we have to do is assume him. We just have to accept him. You don't have to do any backward flips. It's a belief factor. And as we open the doors of the church, as we open the doors of the church, and I say this to you, those that are watching online, this is a great church to be a part of. You that are online, you are our virtual campus. And we have leadership that will guide you into the, the far regions of the law. So you're able to find the depths. So we give you an invitation as we do all others to be a part of God's kingdom. The doors of the church are open. Some may be saved. What do I do to be a part of God's kingdom? Well, it's quite simple. If you believe in the death, burial, the resurrection, the ascension, and the seating of Christ, the Bible says that you're saved. If you're able to confess believe admitting that you're in need of a savior God says hey welcome to the kingdom and as a show if you haven't been baptized as an entryway into his house we will baptize you God says, come. You can come by letter. You may have been a part of a church and you're simply saying, listen, I, I, I was a part of this church. But I've been here some time and I believe that the Lord is leading me under your leadership. Because truth be told, we don't look for churches. Scripture declares that we seek shepherding. It says, my sheep hear my voice. A stranger, they will not follow. You're saying that you want to be a part of it. We accept you by letter. It is important that If you're in fellowship with your other church, I would encourage you to talk with your pastor before joining here because we need stronger churches. And for whatever reason that you're leaving, I think that it should be some debriefing that we can understand why and that we won't, that the back door won't be just as open as the front door. The only one is that you could have Christian experience, you may have backslidden. I just want to tell you that he married the backslider. Doesn't matter what you've done. And I'm so glad that God has delivered me from the guilt that people put on me. That I can stand on his word. Mama, Mama. I'm telling you, Mama, there was a time that I, I just wanted to hide my face because the church said I should be a certain way. And what God told me is, is that I've called you holy. Forget what folk may say. I've called you holy. I've called you unblameable and unreprovable. 
Oh, it's in the text. It's there. You can read it in Colossians 1. Read 18 through 21. He'll tell you that because the finished work of the cross, he settled every score. People have a way of demeaning you. But the Lord says, I love you. Do we have one? Do we have another? God is speaking to you. Mount Olive is rebuilding in all areas. We're rebuilding in membership. We're rebuilding in love. We're rebuilding in lead. And we're rebuilding in living like Christ. See, this is a rebuild because we understand that the Lord is not finished yet. That there's still work to do. Are you one that want to get on the get on the field? Get on this battlefield. Journey with us as we follow Christ, as we learn to love, to lead, and then live like Christ. God is really good to us. He's really good to us. And I'm grateful. I'm so grateful to God that he's not finished. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's not finished. The Lord loves you. I want you to know that the Lord loves you. Regardless of what you've gone through, regardless of the situations, regardless of what you're experiencing right now, Listen, you all, I'm aware that church hurt exists. But I want you to understand that people hurt you when they're hurt. Hurt people hurt people. And we have to be affirmed in who we are and what God has done for us. That's the loving God that we serve. He loves us like that. He's so good to us. He's absolutely awesome. Let's give God a hand of praise. He has set me forth um, for me at least. It's been a step for God and I thank God each and every day that he has set me forth to reach it um, on this earth. Amen. Bless you. What we're going to do is that um, the week of, I'm going to take you to new membership class. And anybody that want to join in the new membership class, I would urge you to do so. We can all be on one accord. Um, let us look at the week. It's going to be a little tedious. Let us look at the week of the 17th, because I fly out of town today, and I won't be back. So let's look at the 17th, um, and we'll have it here. I encourage, listen to me, that's on a Monday, huh? The state convention is that week.
so the week of the 24th. Okay? The week of the 24th, let us, um, it'll be that week right now. Um, and we're going to, it'll lead all the way up to Bible study. So, I want you to be a part of Bible study. Listen, you all, we got to be part of the teaching arms of the church. All right? Everybody, in order to, to move with one sound, we all got to learn of that sound, okay? So, the week of the 24th, I'll begin with you, um, Sister Pearson, will definitely be here. Keep in contact with me. Um, and, of course, we'll be seeing you. Um, so, hey, after the membership class, we will bring you the right hand of fellowship. And you will have all rights, all privileges of the workings of the church as a member. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Bless God for you. Let me say this before we get ready for communion. study this week. You won't have it. You'll have it the following week. You're on vacation. Um, so morning manna would cease also. All right, so I can um, enjoy vacation. Getting prepared for the 125th church anniversary, I keep that in mind. Thank everyone for the pantry, for bringing the pantry and the grains. Thank you. But I will say this right here as we get ready to stand to take communion. I will say now we need canned goods. And if we can bring canned goods that have easy open top, that we're able to bless the homeless where they may not have a can open. So let us do that. If each and every one of us can next Sunday bring at least five to ten, that's okay, canned goods, let us stock it up because we want to get some packages together for the homeless. Amen? So you can get tuna, you know, you can get green beans, pork and beans, you know, those things that you don't necessarily have to heat up. Uh, Y'all may be a little too uh, high psychiatrist for me. See, I grew up in a country where we just open them up and eat them. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, uh, Y'all too high psychiatrist for me, yeah. Oh, uh, it's okay. Yeah, we just opened them up and, and got a spoon, and, and many times we didn't have a spoon. These two fingers right here. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. Y'all, you know, y'all too, y'all too high psychiatrist. No, seriously, let us let us take that in consideration, so that we can. Um, do what God has called us to. He says that that we can feed him when he was hungry. So let us keep that in mind. All right, you all, it's time to time for communion. Those that don't have communion, you raise your hand. And first touch would definitely get you communion if you don't have it. going to be teaching that communion is a weapon. I want you to understand we're just not taking bread or drinking juice, but it's a weapon. It's a weapon because it has fought the enemy and won. Okay? You find this in Exodus 12. So when Jesus was giving communion, he was saying, what I'm about to do is going to allow all evil, all death to pass over you. It's a weapon. And we're going to learn how to utilize it. 
I would suggest to everybody that they would get some communion and have it in their hands. Because he said as often as you do. He didn't just say on first Sundays. Let us stand. On the same night that our Lord Savior Jesus Christ, he was betrayed. He took bread as we do it now. He gave his body that all of our past, present, and future sin could be cast upon him. That we could be innocent. That we could be life-giving spirits. And after he had thanked God, he broke it and said, take eat. This is my body, which shall be given for you. After the same manner, he took the cup. Notice the cup is communion. We have partnership and participation with God. Corinthians 3 and 9 said that we're co-laborers with God. The blood of the New Testament. This is the New Testament in his blood. He says, listen, as often as you do this, it's this right here that allows you to be unified with me. What I've gone through. He said, I did it just for you. After he had given thanks, he said, take you, drink all of it. And after which, they sung a hymn, and they were dismissed from the Mount of Olives. Guide me over, thy great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land, guide Stand. And we bow down. Oh, mighty. Oh, me without. somebody bread of heaven feed me till I will no more bread of heaven bread of heaven feed I say nothing but grace and peace over you, that grace will carry you, and that love will abide within you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to hug somebody and tell them that you love them. Introduce yourselves.